A-list actor, director, screenwriter, and more, George Clooney seemingly does it all. And like many other successful celebrities, he's also made sure to invest a good amount of his earnings from his long-running career into his stunning real estate portfolio. George and his wife Amal are also generous with their philanthropy, such as when they made a generous donation to help a flooded French town near one of their homes. George's property in France is only one of his homes, and the star owns places across the globe. There's his main house in Studio City, Los Angeles, which was his first big purchase back in 1995, and he still calls home to this day, as well as the gorgeous Villa Oleandra, his estate over on Lake Como in Italy, which boasts a reported 25 rooms, an outdoor theater, swimming pool, and much more. Back in the mid-90s, George's popularity thanks to his role on ER was blowing up. During the same time, he bought a $2.2 million villa in Studio City from rock legend Stevie Nicks. When he purchased the home, it clocked in at around 7,000 square feet of space and featured six bedrooms. But ever since then, George has sunk millions more into expanding the property considerably, including the construction of a cable railroad, an outdoor pizza oven, and a brand new building dubbed the Playhouse. In terms of the interior, George would invite CBS cameras into his home back in 2012 to show the space off. That's when we discovered that most of his mansion is covered in hardwood floors, covered ceilings, and includes a couple gorgeous stone fireplaces. There's also a massive dining room that features an entire wall that's solely there to showcase George's unbelievable wine collection. But most important to George was the fact that this was a house that he could turn into a home. After marrying Amal Clooney in 2014, she'd move in and quickly turn this bachelor pad into what she told Vogue is now more of a a low-key house than an entertaining space, especially since the couple welcomed their beautiful twin daughters in 2017. Further amenities include a full-service bar with some classic Hollywood photos and an outdoor pool as well as a home theater with a 3D projection system. In fact, George formerly had several bars in this LA home, but that might have changed once he and his wife decided to turn the place into more of a family home. This main full-service bar, which he once showed off, boasts an original Rat Pack photo of the first Ocean's Eleven film on the wall. And when George made the remake, the actors, including Brad Pitt and Matt Damon, had their photo taken in the same pose, which is also on the wall. These days, George's Studio City Mansion is much more open and airy with the perfect indoor-outdoor flow. Many of the common rooms open out to the gardens and the pool, and while it's more of a family space according to a mall, it still has the capacity to entertain any of the couple's famous friends very easily. Despite living here for almost 30 years now, George has never considered leaving, and why would he? He's got more than enough money to hold onto this main house along with half a dozen others. Years before George would meet a mall and marry her in a beautiful ceremony in Venice, Italy, he already had strong ties to the country thanks to the millions that he'd invested into Villa Oleandra, a jaw-dropping 18th century Lake Como vacation home he bought from the Heinz family for $7 million. Located just steps from the water, this mammoth property boasts more than 25 rooms and amenities that include multiple tennis courts, an outdoor pool, and a massive garage where George can store his collection of vintage motorcycles that almost killed him a few years ago. Over the years, countless A-listers have stopped by to spend the night here, including Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, as well as Jennifer Aniston and even Matt Damon. Inside, some of the many lavish features include ornately carved ceiling, huge bathrooms to pamper yourself, and even a separate pizza room. The place is so nice that parts of George's massive hit film, Ocean's 12, were actually filmed on the estate. The luxury property also boasts a full size gym, landscaped gardens, and a strong wall to keep the mansion protected from any water from the lake. Lake Como is known for other wealthy and famous individuals too, and one of George's neighbors is actually celebrity fashion designer Donatella Ferzacci, for example. George once said that this villa changed my life in a very pleasant and unexpected way. I realized how beautiful life was in Italy and how it really helped calm me and not feel so pressured. So it's clearly near and dear to his heart. Not long after picking up his first villa, George would also buy the villa next door. But the coolest thing of all, back in 2019, George and Amal teamed up with the fundraising platform Omaze to invite
invite one lucky donor to have lunch with them at their villa. I mean, I can't even imagine what it was like for the winner, Deborah, to get invited into George's home and enjoy a five-star Italian meal. The wine selection alone must have been out of this world. 2014 was a pretty big year for George. After all, it was the year he finally gave up his bachelorhood for good. But here's what else happened that year. The newlywed couple spent their honeymoon camping out in the unfurnished rooms of their brand new property situated on the English island of Sonning Eye on the Thames. Reports suggest that the couple paid around $13 million for this stunning home that boasts an entry hall with towering ceilings as well as crisp but Georgian moldings throughout. According to Vogue magazine, the home also includes a sitting room that's full of family photos as well as a pool house and a 16 seat screening room. During a Vogue cover shoot, a mall would also show off the home's glass covered garden room with some gorgeous looking citrus trees. A mall would also go on to explain that the couple's glass fronted pool house doubles as a quote unquote party zone and a workspace for George and Damal who have offices located upstairs. Then again, not everyone is exactly ecstatic that Hollywood's golden couple has moved in next door and a bunch of George's English neighbors, well, they're feeling a little sour about it. All of these properties are gorgeous, but you know George also needs a place to stay back home on the East Coast. In late 2016, he and Amal picked themselves up a nearly $15 million full floor unit in a high rise building in Midtown Manhattan. Originally designed by architects Foster and Partners, this building includes 94 units units, each of which features walls of windows, high ceilings, and polished concrete floors. Extra amenities are said to include a lap pool, library, gym, and even its own culinary market with a ground floor restaurant overseen by the highest rated Michelin rate chef ever, Joel Robichon. Of course, since this is their private home and the couple spent a lot of time here whenever a mall needs to work at Columbia Law School, where she occasionally teaches, the details about the interior have actually been kept hush hush. Finally, what seems to be George's most recent real estate addition happened in 2021, and he kicked off the year with the purchase of an $8.3 million Provence wine estate in Rignoles, France, known as Domaine du Canada. This 18th century estate is located about a dozen miles from Chateau Miraval, the vast parcel of land owned by George's good friend Brad Pitt. Spanning a sprawling 425 acres, George is now the proud owner of gardens, a lake, an olive grove, a 72 foot shaded pool, tennis court, and 25 acres of pristine vineyard. As for the total number of bedrooms and bathrooms in the main house, well, that info isn't readily available from the public listings. But given that it clocks in at around 10,000 square feet of space across three floors, I think that it's pretty safe to guess that the answer is a lot. Of course, as excited as George and Amal no doubt were to try out their new place, nobody was more excited for their big move than the town mayor, who took to Twitter to officially announce that Clooney is arriving. Well everyone, after checking out George Clooney's many amazing global mansions, that's gonna conclude today's house tour. But before we leave, answer me this. If you had to choose a European retreat, either in Italy or France, which would be your pick? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. I'm Kira the Vampire Slayer, follow me on Instagram to chat, and if you would like to check out another tour before you're finished, then stay tuned for this one, where we look at the homes of one of his famous co-stars, Julia Roberts. See you all next time. Bye. So not all of us can afford living in mega mansions like our favorite celebrities, but we can afford to smell like them without breaking the vein. Recently, I discovered Dossier and I'm so happy that I did. Dossier reproduces classic high-end luxury scents at a fraction of the price, keeping the exact same high quality by cutting all the expenses and the infamous brand tax. Some of the things that I love about Dossier is the affordability. Since they remove retailer markups, they're able to offer the most iconic sense at an affordable price between $29 to $59 only. Compared to the original perfumes, Dossier has excellent feedback on the similarity of the scent, and I can contest to that. My two favorites right now are the Ambery Saffron and the Ambery Cherry, but there are countless to choose from. They also have a risk-free system, so you guys can try the perfumes before you commit. If you decide to return the scent, Dossier offers a 
30-day return period where customers can return any unsealed 50 milliliter dossier perfume and get a full refund, no questions asked. There are free returns and exchanges forever. There are also great bulk deals on the Dossier website, including up to 25% in discount and free shipping for three or more bottles of perfume. Not to mention, Dossier is always adding new scents to their collection and are always open to take suggestions from customers for future scents. Today, I'm gonna share my deal with you so you can check them out. Dossier offers a welcome offer of up to 20% on the website. Today, you guys can get up to 30% off for your first order by using my discount code. And I have one especially for you guys in the description box below. And don't forget, when you check out, this bonus 5% applies at the checkout on top of the welcome offer. Happy shopping! A-list actress Julia Roberts also has an A-list real estate portfolio. During her storied career, she's bought and sold homes from New York City to California and even in Hawaii, among others. Julia and her husband Danny Motor are quite private with their personal lives, but we know that they have long called a Point Doom Malibu estate their main residence since 2003. In more recent years, Julia also bought a stunning Victorian-style home in San Francisco for $8.3 million, spanning over 6,000 square feet of space. Also, Michael and I dropped our very own house tour of our new home we moved into this year. So go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Julia Roberts is an actress known for her leading roles in films of different genres from dramas and rom-coms to thrillers and more. She has long been considered one of Hollywood's most bankable stars and her films have earned over $100 million worldwide. Julia's also received a handful of awards and accolades over her successful career, including an Academy Award and three Golden Globe Awards. Julia is certainly a fan of purchasing beautiful real estate, and alongside her husband Danny Motor and their children, the family has lived in some beautiful places. Not only is her longtime main mansion in the exclusive Point Doom community of Malibu, she has bought and sold other properties within the same neighborhood. She's also enjoyed stunning vacation getaways in Hawaii, one of which sold in 2016 for a whopping $16.2 million. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Today we're looking at the properties of Julia Roberts. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. And now let's get into this video. First up, we'll see the place that Julia Roberts considers her main family home in Malibu. Unfortunately, since she bought the house back in 2003 and started completely fresh, photos of the interior are slim to none. At the time of purchase, the estate cost her $6.4 million and it's situated atop of a bluff right on the ocean in the highly desirable Point Doom neighborhood of Malibu, California. Other celebrities who have lived in the same area or still do include the likes of Anthony Hopkins, Leonardo DiCaprio, Bob Dylan, and more. Julia tore down the 6,000 square foot home that existed at the time of purchase and constructed an eco-friendly mansion in its place powered by solar panels. It sits on a spacious acre of land and has steps leading down to a private beach and the beautiful ocean. Considering she got the property completely rebuilt, it came with an estimated price tag of $20 million in total. The mega mansion looks more like a resort from aerial views and the greenhouse also boasts eco-friendly appliances inside. It's reported that her mansion features five beds and six baths, and from aerial views, the home itself looks quite sprawling. From the street, there's no sight of her estate. It's protected with top-notch security, as well as the stunning wooden gates. The exterior of Julia's home also looks unique, with a tropical resort vibe thanks to the wooden beams lining the roof. While the interior remains largely a mystery, Julia has revealed some minor glimpses inside. She and her husband are notoriously private, but last year, they showed a photo from their twins, Hazel and Phineas's 17th birthdays. The family was enjoying breakfast inside the rarely seen Malibu home, sitting at the table in the open plan living room with many chic details. We could see in the background a sofa bench, along with a cream rug and wooden coffee table. Aside from the twins, Julia and Danny also share 
son Henry, who's a couple of years younger, and the parents work hard to give their kids a private life outside of the spotlight. Well, aside from their main residence, in 2015, Julia and Danny purchased another Point Doom house, just a short walk away from this one. This new place was a fixer upper, costing the couple $3.9 million, but since there was a lot of work to be done at the time of purchase, there were no interior photos. Although the house may appear unimpressive at first, Julia did quite the job giving it the full pretty woman treatment. After it was renovated, she actually listed the home for rent at 10.5k per month. So Julia would be both your landlord and neighbor. Once the home was presentable, the ranch style space offered beamed ceilings and hardwood floors with a living room containing a white brick fireplace. The entire 1,620 square foot house came unfurnished to rent as well and had three beds and one bath. But it looks like Julia added a second bathroom during the remodel. The eating kitchen had a white brick wall and new stainless steel appliances as well as a wood topped center breakfast island. They kept the blue gray paint on the exterior of the home and the property also has a small green guest house along with a two car garage. Sadly, there's no pool on the one acre property, but it does come with a key to the gates of Malibu's Riviera Beach, also known as Little Doom. In 2020, Julia also offloaded another neighboring property she had collected in the Point Doom neighborhood. The couple sold this spare Malibu home in an off market deal for $8 million to a Silicon Valley based hedge fund tycoon, making a tiny bit of a profit because they had bought it for $7.45 million in 2016. The 1.2 acre estate lies right across the street from Julia and Danny's longtime family home in the area and stands a modest 1,770 square feet of space, packing in four bedrooms and three baths. The buyer, Thomas LaFont, conveniently owned the home right next door to, which is a $13 million ranch. So it seems like this one was just a bit of an add-on. The beachfront cottage home spanned one level with a sliding glass door for a front door opening directly into a casual dining area. There's also a sunlit kitchen with stainless steel appliances, as well as a spacious living room with vaulted ceilings and white walls. The real selling point of this bungalow was the property though, with its sprawling lot that was fully landscaped with grassy lawns and private hedges, as well as lush plants. There were also plenty of terraces and secluded patios to hang out or entertain al fresco. In more recent years, Julia surprised us all when she hopped on some real estate outside of Malibu, setting her sights on San Francisco. In 2020, the actress bought a century-old Victorian Revival-style house in the Presidio Heights neighborhood of San Francisco for $8.3 million, according to property records. The prime location offers views of the San Francisco Bay and the Golden Gate Bridge right from her new place, and the area is known for its high-end family homes. Her historic five-floor house was designed around 1907 and renovated since, featuring all the modern amenities that one could need, while keeping some classic details. Inside, the home spans 6,245 square feet with five beds and 4.5 baths. The home has a partial slate roof and was remodeled by interior designer John Wheatman. The main level offers a large entryway with leaded windows as well as a living room with fireplace and built-in. While also on this level, there's the formal dining room and the custom kitchen with bonuses like a walk-in pantry and breakfast bar. Other highlights include a wet bar, wine fridge, and desk area, while off the kitchen you'll find a back hallway with stairs to the upper floors. The second floor of the home has a grand staircase with stained glass windows and a total of four beds and two baths with the south bedroom boasting a fireplace and the north bedroom offering views of the bay and golden gate as well as a sun porch. Moving up to the next floor, you'll find Julia and Danny's master suite with more A plus views and a walkout balcony and skylight. There's also a dressing room, walk-in closet, and a large remodeled bath with split vanities. Other features of this home include a two-car garage and a mid-floor area with skylight that can be used as an office area and another large guest or bonus room here as well. And we aren't even done with the floors yet. Moving down from the kitchen, the level below offers a screening room as well as a full bath, 1000 bottle wine cellar, mud room, and the laundry room. Designer barn doors lead to the lowest level, which at this point is starting to sound like a bunkie way underground. But actually here you'll find a built-in dog bath and French doors out to the garden. Outside of Julia's property, there's a rear patio and garden as 
well as a deck with barbecue, but since this is San Francisco after all, there's little room for much else outside. After looking at the homes of Julia Roberts, we can see that the actress has some stunning taste in real estate. It's said that she still maintains a vacation getaway in Hawaii, despite selling one property here for over $16 million in 2016, but she spends most of her time in Malibu with her family as far as we know. Well, that about wraps up this house tour. After checking out Julia's homes, which was your fave location? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. As usual, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another house tour. Bye!